Hostiles, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond. Isn't the Lambda site off-world, sir? Some time back, I did a video talking about the strange dynamic that most of the reptilian images that we see are of females. Now, let me say this right up front. I am not saying that human females are reptiles. Not saying that at all. What I'm trying to say is that there are reptilians on the planet who are using female sensuality and sexuality to manipulate the populace. Now, I used, of course, this is Morena Baccarin on the left, and just to be very clear, that is the cover of Esquire magazine. It's not some stolen metadata, so I didn't take anything I wasn't supposed to. She was the actress that played Anna in the series V from back in 2010. Um, she's played many other things, uh, Deadpool's girlfriend. The reason I chose her and this particular image is Morena Baccarin has subtle down, subtle sexuality down to a science. Absolutely one of the most um, alluring without being overt female actresses out there. Now, I'm not alleging she's a reptilian, just saying. Okay, I'm just using an example here. Because Genesis 3.1 in the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. You see, it's that subtlety that was the trap that got uh, Solomon with the Queen of Bathsheba. Uh, Delilah got Samson, and Bathsheba, simply by taking a bath on a roof from afar, got King David. So it's subtlety that is the key. And there's a lot of information in that one scripture. Beast of the field, most subtle, power of speech, could reason, knew of God's commands. Now... What does that have to do with anything with Antarctica? Well, Hollywood and the media, and in this particular case, sometimes games, have a way of revealing things subtly that are based in truth. This is a character known as Sylvanus Windrunner from World of Warcraft. Was it a year? Maybe? Not even? They opened up a new... Uh, game, there was a, not a new game, but a, a new version of the game called Shadowlands, where the beginning of it, a female who uses subtle, sly tricks like this, breaks the veil of the dome over a frozen world and preys upon the uh, weakness of a man to do so. They have taken this character over the years with World of Warcraft, those of you who are not um, aware of it, and changed her subtly to become something a lot more sexualized than she used to be. She was just an elf. If you look at um, the early days of World of Warcraft, she was fully clothed. Fully clothed most of the time and had a bow and arrow, and it was her and her two sisters. And this has been a subtle change. Now, once again, still, what does it have to do with Antarctica? Well, Part of that dome of ice over um, a living world is something that I've alleged for a long time. And I've used images like this to try to portray what something like that might look like. 
There is an article out now, though, from Science Alert that gives us more evidence and insight into the uh, civilization that may be existing down there. Many have talked about what happened to Lemuria, what happened to Atlantis, the civilization of Atlantis. I don't think anything happened to them in the sense that they're still right in front of us, we just can't see it. They've recently talked about New Zealand be, being uh, now an eighth continent, not just an island, because of this region right here that's all submerged. Personally, my personal belief is that the continent we know to be Antarctica is actually Lemuria, and the sunken region of the Atlanteans is here. Now, some would say, wait a minute, that's not where Plato described it being. I think Plato encountered an island city that was built by the Atlanteans because if they were as powerful and advanced as he described, they wouldn't have had just one region. I'm sure they were all over. And there's been evidence found in Africa, the Eye of Africa, they say, um, looks a lot like some type of settlement. I don't think it's mutually exclusive. It's one or the other. I don't think the Atlantis, quote unquote, was just one place. It was a civilization that had um, conquered the globe and was all over. This is a lot how it's depicted that there are these make-believe continents that just are out in the middle of nowhere. Um, there was a song years and years ago, um, KLF talked about the ancients of Mu. And there's a lot of imagery in their videos that's very, very accurate. So this is my opinion on this. Now, we're going to get to that article real quick here so that people don't know or lose track of what we're talking about. This is Science Alert. Talking about this little animal called a tuatara. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Genomic study reveals New Zealand's tuatara is like no other animal on the planet. And I'm sure still some of you are like, but what did that have to do with subtle and female? Stick with me. In the evolutionary tree of life, the lizard-like tuatara from New Zealand is on a branch all to itself. In the time of the dinosaurs, this extraordinary animal had lots of relatives all around the world, and yet now there's nothing else like it on Earth. According to new sequencing of the tuatara's entire genome, one of the largest on record and 50% larger than the human genome, it appears this strange creature is neither lizard, bird, nor mammal. Rather, it's some strange amalgamation of the three. According to the authors of the new study, the animal's genomic architecture is unlike anything previously reported. Quote, the tuatara genome contained about 4% jumping genes that are common in reptiles, 10% common in monotremes, platypus and echidna, and less than 1% common in placental mammals, such as humans. Quote, this was highly, a highly unusual observation and indicated that the tuatara genome is an odd combination of both mammalian, reptilian, and bird components. Found solely in New Zealand, pay attention to this, the tuatara, which does greatly resemble the lizard to the untrained eye, is considered a teonga, or special treasure for the local Maori. Now listen to this next part very carefully. These nocturnal creatures can live for a century, they're very long lived, withstand super cold temperatures, unlike any other lizard, hold their breath for as long as an hour, much like a fish, and see light out of a third parietal eye on their heads. So what does that tell us? Here we have a creature from New Zealand, very close to Antarctica, about as close to Antarctica as you're going to get, that can handle super cold temperatures with a third eye. Now, here is another gem of information that a lot of people would, would just gloss over. Throughout that huge amount of time, 250 million years, Tuatar have remained the sole members of the archaic reptilian order known as Rhynchocephalia. They are members of an archaic reptilian order.
As such, Tuatar are a direct line back to our origins. But their continued existence on our planet is not a sure bet. And as if that wasn't enough, the sex of future Tuatara depends heavily on the temperature surrounding the eggs, and global warming could lead to too many males being born. Wait a minute. So you're saying if it's warmer, more males will be born. But if it's colder, more females will be born. But they can still survive extremes of cold. Now, think about that in terms of existing under the ice in Antarctica. An archaic reptilian order with all of those characteristics. And what did the Bible say about the serpent? Had the ability to speak, had the ability to reason. Think about this. And with everything being disclosed now about uh, these craft in our skies, to me it's plain as day that there is an archaic, very advanced reptilian order down there. This little animal in New Zealand is just part of it. It's the only one we know about. They're just much more evolved. These are the two lost continents. What we know to be New Zealand is just the very high mountaintops of what used to be Atlantis. And the continent we know as Antarctica is Lemuria. We're a very advanced reptilian race possessing a third eye exists. I will give you the link to this article so you can read that information for yourself. And we have found images, and this is from Google Earth Pro, of serpents down there and serpent-like statuary down there. It's not a secret. It's personally why I think they, at the exact same time, that they released all of the images in Antarctica on Google Earth Pro that people could go find, the CIA also did their Flat Earth PSYOP so that people thought it was a giant ring, so people didn't go look or take it seriously. The real truth type people that would actually take the time to go and search Antarctica. Because if they could just dismiss the idea of Antarctica in the minds of those who would do the research, that's all they have to do to keep anyone from looking. I know it's not something you're going to hear anywhere else on YouTube, but that's kind of what I pride the channel on. This fits for all of the things that we're actually seeing in our skies, even amongst us. Beast of the field, the most subtle power of speech could reason, knew of God's commands. What else would qualify? And once again, let me reiterate, I'm not saying every woman walking around is a serpent. I'm saying that there is a race of these beings who know how to appear a certain way, very advanced, that are using female sexuality to manipulate world events. So, I will leave it there. But please would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are 
hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. Hot style, 12 o'clock and 6 miles. What is this tack they're looking for anyway? It's some kind of weapon left by the ancients. The kind that decides who wins the war. Have Moloch's warriors been here before? I don't like the look of this. That was above and beyond, Chris.